Hey everyone, how are you doing once again? I would like to welcome you to Moment of Encounter. We are still on our wonderful series, Building Blocks for Divine Encounter. And today, we want to look at your Uzziah. Your Uzziah. I know that as you dig deep into this word, you will identify with us what your Uzziah is and why your Uzziah needs to go. And I tell you, you will be glad you joined. God bless you. Have an impactful time. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Once again, I would like to welcome you to another glorious time in God's presence. It's time for moments of encounter with your friend, Pastor Uluwato Bukukwala. Once again, I would like to let you know that God is doing great things with this podcast. I celebrate you. Please, would like your feedback, would like your comments. I would like you to please share this news with your friends. It will bless them. Today, we are still looking at building blocks for divine encounter. I want to believe that this series has been a blessing to you. It has been a great blessing to me. And I tell you that God is set to do many more glorious things through this. I pray for you that today, once again, you will be able to lay another powerful block that will lead you to divine encounter. Today, I want us to look at the word of God in Isaiah chapter 6. And I want you to please listen carefully and journey with me today as we dig deep into the word of God. Isaiah chapter 6. Please turn your Bibles and please hear me and let's journey together. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet and with two, they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's army, and the whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, It's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. The one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal, They are taken from the altar with a pair of thongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to these people? Who will go for us? I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Yes, go and say to these people, Listen carefully. But do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. This is a prophetic scripture that I love so much. There are times whereby some things need to go before you can have a divine encounter. So many of us have Uzziahs in our life. So many of us have things that represent Uzziah. He said the year that King Uzziah died. Then I saw the Lord. The funny thing is this. If you look at the verse 6. And verse 7, after all this, sorry, permit me to say verse 8. Here was a priest that has been serving God. Here is a priest that has been working in the temple of God. But yet, he was not sent by God. Yet, he had no message from God. I want you to know that for you to get to the place of encounter, there are some things that must give way. King Uzziah was a king that had a very interesting history. If you look at the account of the book of Kings, he reigned for 52 years. Oh, he started right with God. He did so well with God. He was a man that decided to walk in the ways of God. But somehow later on in his life, he missed it because we were told that he was struck by leprosy and he died and yet all this happened to him under the watch of Isaiah there are people that need to know that there, if there is an Uzziah in your life God will not encounter you if there's an Uzziah in your spiritual work with God God will not be able to visit you 
that verse 1 is very, very important to the journey of a believer. That says the year that King Uzziah died, I, I, Isaiah, I saw the Lord. He not only did he see the Lord, he saw the Lord sitting on his glorious throne. Not only did he encounter that grace, he had what I call a spiritual purification of his words, of his number one instrument, which was his voice and his tongue. Not only did that happen, he got what we say divine commission. For some of us to get to that place whereby we'll be able to have this prophetic encounter, our Uzziah needs to die. To you, your Uzziah can be your what? Your weakness. To you, your Uzziah can be that vice that is holding you down. To you, your Uzziah can be your addiction. To you, your Uzziah can be that relationship. To some people there, your Uzziah can be that boyfriend. It can be that girlfriend. To some people out there, your Uzziah can be your job. It can be your car. It can be your house. It can be your family. To you, your Uzziah can be that social media. To you, your Uzziah can be that TV show that keeps you. To you, your Uzziah can be your wants. It can be your desire. Your Uzziah can be that promotion that you want so much. Your Uzziah can be that position. But thank God that the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. Do you know what it means? When a man says, I've been working for the boss, but I've never seen the boss before. You know what it means when he says, oh, I, I have an ID card, but I don't even know where their office is. But thanks be to God that gave Isaiah this privilege. One of the prophets that we have in the Old Testament that gave us a description of Jesus, he gave us so well, is prophet Isaiah. One of the prophets that showed us what will happen uh -huh, when Jesus will come, the revelation that will follow it. Is this prophet Isaiah? He had a great assignment, but he was stuck around Uzziah. He had a prophetic destiny, but his Uzziah was there blocking him from having that encounter. It can be that comfort that you are running with, it can be that form of spiritual laziness that has held you down. But I stand here to tell you that what you need to do is to put your Uzziah to death. How come it happened to Uzziah? That a man that started well with God would suddenly die of leprosy. How come this same man that we have talked about would be the one that God had to take out of his temple and he was compelled to reside in a separate place? It's because he lost something. And by him losing that, it had an effect on the man called Isaiah. It will not be good for a man that was meant to be what I call a divine voice, to be what I call a temple voice. It will not be good for a man that is meant to be what we call a voice in generation to be seen as a palace voice. That was what Isaiah was. How can it be said that a man that is supposed to be what we call a prophet never had the encounter that will launch him into his destiny? Every one of us need to check in word. And I want you to ask yourself, what is it that is holding me down? What is it that is blocking me from having my own encounter? The year that King Uzziah died, it was about Uzziah. That was why he had to put it there. That it was that particular year that he knew that his Uzziah passed on. That was when he could see God. And not only did he see God, he saw the glory. He saw the overwhelming presence of God. It was so vivid in his memory that he described it. He told us everything in details, what he saw. He cannot forget it. It was very, very real to him. You know, sometimes some of us know God, but we don't know what God stands for. Some of us know God, but we don't know how God looks like. We don't know what God is saying to us, some of us know God, but we don't know that our voice is not really in line with God. One of the things that happened to Isaiah was that God needed to purify his tongue. And the moment that word came to him, you discover that what? His tongue changed. And the first thing he said was, Woe is me if I am undone, and if I am a man that dwell among people of unclean lips. I want to say to somebody out there, you need to give up your Isaiah. You need to help put your Uzziah to death. You need to make sure that you step out of that comfort zone. Like I said to you, it can be 
anything. Your Uzziah can be that lost. Your Uzziah can be your passion. Your Uzziah could be that which nobody can identify with you. Your Uzziah could be that which everybody knows with you and say, well, you think that's why he or she is finding his comfort, but yet it can be a problem to you. Your Uzziah can once again be that addiction. Have you ever looked back and say, what is it that is blocking me from having a divine encounter? What do I need to put out of my life? What do I need to put out of my space that will be the level in which my life and my encounter will come and will start? I want to tell somebody out there, there are so many Uzziah. Uzziah can be a king, but it doesn't mean that it is relevant to your destiny. To Isaiah, it was a king, but to Isaiah, the king of kings was interested in him. To Isaiah, he was like, oh, this I'm, I'm, I'm a palace prophet. Do you know what it means? When, when you had the king around you, but yet God was not with him. To Isaiah, Uzziah was his king, but he needed to have an appointment with the king of kings. To Isaiah, I'm sure the palace of Uzziah was everything that he would have dreamt of. But yet, he needed to see the glory of the king of kings in his full paraphernalia. I don't know what is like an Uzziah to you. Like I said, I might not be able to fix that box. I might not be able to tick that box for you. But I want you to have what I call a quick rethink. What is that thing that is blocking me from seeing the almighty God? What is that thing that shows up at the point when I need to have a one-on-one engagement with God? What is that thing that I know that in my place of prayer, in my place of quiet time, in my place of setting apart my time for God, that the Lord is telling me and how doing it in my ear and say, son, daughter, get rid of these things. If you read from Isaiah chapter one, you would have discovered something very, very interesting about prophet Isaiah. He was always talking about people. Who is this person? Who is that person? Who is this one? Who is this one? But from that verse six, the moment he had an encounter, my God, the light turned on him. He realized that he was an unclean man. What would be said of that? A prophet in the land is saying that he's so much unclean. Why would it be that when the Lord was about to send his prophetic fire into his life, he started with his tongue. The same tongue that I've been prophesying in chapter 1, in chapter 2, in chapter 3, in chapter 4, in chapter 5. But at chapter 6, something was still wrong with that tongue that the Lord had to send his coal of fire to his tongue. It's time for you to just take a pause wherever you are. Take a pause and have a rethink that the fact that you are hearing from God does not mean that you have encountered God. The fact that you are serving, they've named you a prophet does not mean that what you are really downloading from God. Oh, to God, you can see that even if when we are reading the scriptures, we can't say that prophet Isaiah became, it was a minor prophet. Definitely you will cut him in slack. We know him as what? A major prophet in the Bible. Do you understand? And part of that is because he had a divine encounter with God that transformed his life. I'm praying for someone that is connected to this meeting today that you will encounter God more than that. We record in this scripture, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, in the name of Jesus. It is possible. All you need is to crucify your Uzziah. Remember that Uzziah is that personal thing, that thing to you that maybe endears you so much. That thing that when you look at it, you say, oh, this thing is all about, is is that which I, I put so much emphasis on. I have seen people that God wants to use them and the first thing he tells them is go and burn your certificate. Do you know what it means? And they got it right. Say, go and burn your certificate. Some of them, the Lord tells them, go and hand it over to your pastor. Some of people, the Lord tells them and say, you know what? Uh, Whatever you are doing now, whatever you are doing now, whatever you are studying, you will not use it. And some of them find it easy. And some of them struggle with it. There's this story that keeps coming back to me. Every time I remember, I wish it's the other way around. I just got to vigil that night. And 
when I got there, there's another fellow pastor that was looking so sad. So I walked up to him and said, sis, why are you looking so sad? I said, I had the bad news. I was the bad news. He said, there's this young brother that we used to be in the campus fellowship together. He was a very vibrant brother. I think he was even the campus fellowship leader, president. He said, he would tell them that God said to me that I'm going to... I'm going to be a pastor that I'm just here for, to just come and have this basic level of education. And that I know I'm not going to use my certificate to work. But by the time he finished school, he went for NYSE and he got a good placement. And the next thing was that they made him the manager of a popular eatery in the state where he was. And one dark afternoon, robbers came. And by the time robbers came in, they were asking, who is the manager? Who is the manager? He approached them, gave them the, everything they wanted. And on their way out, they turned back and they shot him. And he died. If you knew that God wanted you, why would you still step out of the covering of God? That job, that certificate was his desire. He was not ready to put it to death. There are so many people around me listening to me right now that what is that thing that the Lord has told you that you need to get away from? I'm not going to say what is not in the scripture. I don't want to put myself under a curse. But I want to believe that God, who is the God of the prophet, must have been putting a nudge and saying, you need to stay away from Uzziah. You need to step out of this palace. You need to step out of this, your comfort zone. You need to stop becoming what we call a palace puppet. You need to get yourself into that realm whereby you download from me and you hear from me. And yet, Isaiah never thought of it, or Isaiah never picked that vision. Isaiah never ran with it. A man that was declaring the voice of God in Isaiah chapter 1, a man that was declaring the voice of God down to chapter 6, then something happened in chapter 6 verse 8. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to these people? Do you know it's possible for you to be a messenger for your finances, a messenger for your personal vision, a messenger for your personal desire. You are just running your race. You are just running your goal. But at the point in time, the word of the Lord came to him. After he had this encounter, he said, who can I send? Not as a leader. You know, some of us would like God to send us as a leader to people. Some of us would like God to announce our post before we start the work. Oh, once, once I get to that level, when, when, I'm, when I'm at that level, then I would begin to ask for that encounter. When I, when I achieve this, then I'll be able, you know, let God just bless me with everything I want. Then, then I will now, I'm now ready for him. No, the Lord is looking for servant leader. He said, whom shall I send as a what? As a messenger. Meaning he was just an errand boy. Meaning he was just meant to deliver the word. And by the time he delivers it, nobody, you know, you know what happens? When you deliver the message, if it's a bad message, people put the anger on you. Have you ever ordered food from a delivery service before? And when the food is not what you expect, the anger goes to the what? To the delivery man. So no wonder Isaiah faced a lot of what kickbacks, a lot of resistance because he was ready. And he said for once, meaning everything he had been doing from chapter one, chapter two, three, four, five, six was nothing. He said, who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, yes, go and say to these people. Uh, let me drop this here. The encounters you have is not just for your own personal use. It's for you to be a messenger of God. And God sends people anywhere he likes. I met a friend recently. He's a friend of a friend. And we just finished a festival. And I was talking to him. And I said, he said, I said, I know you. Are you a missionary? I said, yes. And you know, I'm a missionary. I said, yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just called to these people in the rural area. And he said, oh, what we do is to just create boreholes for them. And I said, hey, how did you have this divine call on you? I'm a pastor and I'm so true. He said, said, that's what the Lord wants me to be. I'm a missionary. I said, when I live in Lagos, I, I live on, I live tomorrow. I live Monday morning. There's a lot to do. Do you know that God is still calling people to irrelevant places? God is still calling people 
to where men see us. Why are you there? But to God, that is a place where the message needs to be heard. I'm praying for somebody listening to me right now. What is that Uzziah? I pray that that Uzziah dies today. You need to kill the Uzziah. You need to step out of the comfort zone of that Uzziah. You need to take your Uzziah to the cross and nail it there. It comes with a lot of pain. It comes with a lot of weight. It comes with a lot. People will look at you and say, but you betrayed me. Your Uzziah can say, oh, you betrayed me. But the truth is this. It is not about you. It's not about your Uzziah. It's about the king that has called you. As I bring this word to a close, can you please make a list of this Uzziah? And can you please walk on them one after the other? And can you please lay them to rest? And don't let them have a voice that will stop you from you having your divine encounter. I pray for you that may the good Lord guide you as you lay this block of divine encounter. And I decree that as you take these prophetic steps, may you have divine revelations that will become an encounter that will build your life to your divine destiny. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's bow our heads. Father, I pray for these, your children, that as they have joined this meeting today, let every Uzziah in their life, every blockage, every form of distraction, every form of indiscipline, whatever it is that is like a Uzziah before them, the Lord, you would help them to take it out. The same measure of grace that was dished out to Isaiah, that his own Uzziah died in chapter 6, not in chapter 54. I pray that, Lord, you would dish it out to everyone connected to this meeting. That early in their work with you, this Uzziah will die, and they will pick up their prophetic destinies and mantles, and they will begin to hear your word, and you begin to send them forth as messengers before you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining.